There are heroes among us, lurking at every Magic the Gathering tournament, saving us from our ignorance of the rules. You can usually recognize them by the sound heard right before they appear. Judge! If you ever have a question about a rule or an interaction you find puzzling at any time, feel free to call a judge. They are kind, helpful, and happy to help. But not here. We will play a game of three-player commander, and I will break the rules a handful of times. And when I do, you do the following. Judge! But if you were wrong and I was following the rules, you give your opponent a point. But if you caught me and I was breaking the law, you get a point for yourself. <laughs> All right, let's go. So we start the game. Kalev, you won the die roll. You go first. That is how it would happen in real life. <laughs> yeah. I have Moldrotha, the grave ties. So during each of my turns, I may play up to one permanent card of each type from my graveyard. Pretty good. Quite good. I've got Coxa and Kuno Rose. And there's six mana six six that has Vigilance, Menace, and Lifelink. And whenever they enter the battlefield or attack, I may exile five cards from my graveyard. And if I do, I return target creature card from my graveyard to the battlefield. And I am playing Psy, Master Thopterus. It's a legendary 1-4 creature human artificer. And whenever I cast an artifact spell, I create a 1-1 one, one color Thopter artifact creature token with flying. And if I pay two and sacrifice two artifacts, I draw a card. Now, if at any point, I break the rule to follow or make you do a game action that is illegal. You may call a judge. Dalev, you're going first. You draw a card. We are in a three-player commander game. Do All I right. draw a card? <laughs> is, there a, a is there rules for three-player commander? Who plays three-player commander? Honestly, it's like... If you only have two friends. Get like we do. <laughs> like we do, yes, exactly. Get an enemy. Okay, I'll draw a card. <laughs> I'm not falling for this. Dalev, you'll play an Undergrowth Stadium. Undergrowth Stadium enters the battlefield tapped unless I have two or more opponents. I consider yourself opponents. So. It enters untapped. Yes. Dalev. Yes. You will tap it and play a Soul Ring. Okay. Uh, <laughs> just like usual commander. <laughs> he always has it, I swear. <laughs> it's magnetic to my starting hand. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yes, I've casted a Soul Ring. You will pass the turn. Now, today we're playing counterclockwise. Is that... Can I call a judge on Actually, that? Actually, yeah. Is there a pulled it? We'll just I'll it. let it pass. All right. Okay. I won't call it. That might even be a good chat. Like, it might actually never be in the rules, and he wants us to trick us. I don't know. You won't find out until after the game. I'll play a seat of the Synod. I'll play a Soul Ring. Why not? I'll tap it, floating one colorless, to play an Underworld Cookbook. It's a one mana artifact. If I tap it and discard a card, I create a food token. And if I pay four and sacrifice an Underworld Cookbook, I return target creature card from a graveyard to my hand. I will discard a card to create a food. I will discard a Sword of the Meek. It's got a lot of text. We'll talk about it later. I make food. Mm -hmm. That'll be my turn. Yemen, yeah, you draw a card. You, draw. you play a mountain. You pass the turn. Go. <laughs> yeah, that's, so, sometimes you just don't have a soul ring. Am I doing my turn on my own or you tell me what you I do? You untap. Okay. I do. You draw. I draw. Mm. You play a lotus petal. I do have a lotus petal. I can sacrifice it to make any mana of Elikana. So it's basically a one-time land. You play a forest. Uh, I do play a forest. You cast Dark Ritual. Mm -hmm. I assume with my black mana. Yes. All right. I will tap for black and cast Dark Ritual. Okay. You have three black floating. That is correct. This resolves. You will sack this for blue. Okay. It is sacked for blue. You will play a Moldothra, the Grave Tide. How? With Two colorless, mm -hmm. one blue, mm -hmm. one green, mm -hmm. two black. Okay, so I have a black floating. Yes, you'll use it for a Stitcher Supplier. Oh, I do have that. So when Stitcher Supplier enters the battlefield or dies, put the top three cards, ding, 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 from the library into your graveyard. So I've added a Can of Text Tomb Sentinel. When Can of Text Tomb Sentinel enters the battlefield from your graveyard, exile up to one target non and permanent is unearthed. A Mox Ember, which is a legendary artifact that taps for manas to your legendary colors. And a Concordant Crossroads, which basically gives everything else. Great. Cast your Mox Ember. Uh, I do so. Because I can. You may. Tap it for green. Uh, I can tap for green because I have no draw. Okay. There's a juicy Concordant Crossroads in your graveyard. Yes, yes. A green card that gives all your creatures haste. It makes a lot of sense. Would you like to cast it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> makes a lot of sense. <laughs> okay. Done. You attack Yamin with the Moldrothra and the Stitcher Supplier. Okay, I will do so. I attack Yamin for seven. He's too much of a threat. He is. Too many mountains. 
Also, he's not in the Soaring Club. He is not in the Soaring Club. You take seven, six commander damage. I don't know, this should be easy, but I feel like we're <laughs> there's already a trick. So if at any time you miss one, I'll just tell you after the game. Have we already missed one? I'll just tell you after the game. Oh, no. oh. You pass the turn. I do. I, I could cast more. I draw. I will play a Yavi Maya Cradle of Growth. Mm -hmm. All your lands are now also forests. I'll play a Mana Crypt. I will tap these two to play a Crack Clan Iron Lord. It is a artifact that has sacrificed an artifact. Add two to your mana pool. It's pretty good. I'm gonna pay two. I'm gonna play a giant turtle. My sword of the meek, I'll give it a read now. It's a creep creature gets plus one plus two and it has equipped two, but whenever a one one creature comes into play under your control, you may return sword of the meek from your graveyard to play, then attach it to that creature. I'll attach it to giant turtle. I'll judge. call judge. <laughs> you haven't started talking earlier. <laughs> We have footage. <laughs> we yes, saying that Yavin started earlier. I, I would argue that that's not a 1-1 one, one creature. This thing doesn't trigger. But it says 1-1 one, one here. Yeah, but it gets plus 0, plus 3 as long as it's untapped. So as it is a continuous effect, although it says 1-1, one, one, you are right. This is never I would have a 1-1. One, one. I would have been baffled. Yamin gets a point. Mm. Yamin, it's your turn. You draw a card. I do draw a card. That's a good one. Oh, you play a mountain. That's Pass the one I drew. God. <laughs> I will untap. All right, and draw. Okay. You would like to play a forest. I play a forest. You cast a canoptic spider from your graveyard. Like this? Yes. All right. It comes into play from my graveyard. Yeah. When Canoptech Tomb Sentinel enters the battlefield from a graveyard, exile up to one target non land permanent. When it enters the battlefield, you exile my crack kind of iron work. Judge. Yamin. This didn't enter from the graveyard. Explain why not. Well, it was cast. It entered from the stack or something. Unearth, <laughs> Unearth is an activated ability that actually just puts it onto the battlefield. But To be fair, I put it from my graveyard. I didn't put it on it. <laughs> Yamin showed why it's such a big head. Yes, that is indeed the fact. It goes on the stack before going on the battlefield. Yamin has two points. To punish him for his early lead, you attack him with everything. Okay. Uh, I will attack with all my three creatures. Judge. Yes. That thing has vigilance. Okay. <laughs> I, did, I did not ask you to keep it. I did not ask you to tap it. You get 0.5 points. This is so unfair. <laughs> I'll take it. It was your fault for tapping it. You didn't tell me to tap it. There was. I told you to attack him. Yeah. You take 11 damage, six of which is commander. You pass the turn. I passed the turn. I will untap. I have a mana crypt trigger. Yes. There's a Blastoise cone in Yamin's ear. <gasps> if it hits Blastoise, I take three damage. Just it not. <laughs> I will draw. So far, so good. Yeah. I will play Thought Cast for one. It just says draw two cards, but cost one less for every artifact I can draw. I will play an island. I will cast a Panharmonicon. Guys, this is where it gets tough. Mm. I'll read it. If an artifact or creature entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So now this becomes a 1-7? No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is not how it works. Are you trying to trick him? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yes. Judge! <laughs> I will sacrifice the Underworld Cookbook to the Crack Clan Ironworks to add two mana. So far, so good. I'll pay one blue and cast Sly Master Thopter. I'll reread it because it's kind of relevant here. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, create a 1-1 one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying. Sacrifice two artifacts, draw a card. I would like to cast a Bone Saw. Now we go down a winding road. Bone Saw, pretty simple. It's a uh, equipment. If you pay one, equipped creature gets plus one plus zero. There's a Panharmonic card. First of all, Sign Master's Thopter is triggered. I would get one Thopter, but now there's a Panharmonic card. No, 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 no. <laughs> yes, Tal. It's only, <laughs> it's only cast. It doesn't come into play. That is correct. That is correct. Ugh. It's not an ETB trigger. Tav gets a point. <laughs> Going, you can hit the back button on the on YouTube and see how both of us are like hovering our. <laughs> We're on your case. Get your hands ready. One Thopter. The Thopter enters the battlefield. Yes. Sword of the Meek triggers twice. Judge. Uh, Panamanicon says if it uh, causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control, uh, this is not a permanent. Unfortunately, I would have had a bunch of really cool game actions if you missed it. So Sword of the Meek enters just once. Mm -hmm. 
And I think I'm good with all of this. I know they have haste. I don't care. I'm passing the turn to Yamen. All right. You will draw. I will draw. You'll play a mountain. You'll pass the turn. <laughs> Go. <laughs> You're having a great game. You're part of it. You will untap. I untap. No you draw a card. You play that forest. It is a forest. Tolev? Carl. I think you need some action. You're going to attack Yamen with Moldrothra and the Canoptic Tome. And you need... You need that citrus supplier to die. So you're going to attack me with the citrus supplier. Okay. Judge. It has vigilance. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you made the error in this case. Would you like to call a judge? Um, yes. I will remove you 0.5 points. No. For being a bad friend. No. <laughs> he learned from his mistake already. Really? <laughs> My half point. I guess I'll take 10, six of which being commando damage. That is correct. And I will block with my Psy. Your Citrus Supplier dies. It does die. You would like to mill three cards. So what's the life total now? I'm at 12 with 18 commando damage. Like the stuff. Yeah. So we mill three cards. And then we go. A Whisper Circle. Yes. And a Question. Should I request it? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to give all three of those a read? Emrakul and Muldrotha seem like a non vote to me, but... I don't think it matters much, but okay. Why doesn't it matter? Because Emrakul shuffles all of them. Wait a minute! Emrakul is not even legal! Judge! <laughs> Emrakul is banned in Commander? We're playing Commander! He is correct! Emrakul is an illegal card in the deck! Toph, you get a point? And I don't even... Uh, now I can read the other cards! And uh, because we can't let you play with a banned card, uh, it's okay, I've got a... Equal replacement. Oh, you're so dirty. <laughs> okay. I need Colossal Dreadmaw. So should I read Colossal Dreadmaw? Yes, please. please. <laughs> it's basically the same as Emrakul. So but... it's a four green green six six dinosaur which has trample. Yes. That was it. And? It's really good. It's better than Stonecrow. It is. <laughs> that science proves it. Uh, okay, so we have a Whisper Silk Cloak. It's an artifact equipment for three. To equip, creature is unblockable and has shroud. And then we have a Questing Beast, which is a 2 green green 4 4 legendary creature beast. Vigilance, Death Touch, Hate. Questing Beast can be blocked by creatures with powerless or control. Combat damage that would be dealt by creatures you control can't be prevented. Whenever Questing Beast deals combat damage to an opponent, deals that much damage to a planeswalker that player controls. And on Tuesdays, it makes good coffee. I, I wish I had a Questing Beast. Yeah, I want a Questing Beast now. <laughs> Having good coffee on Tuesdays. You will cast a Questing Beast. All right, I will tap a Soul Ring and two forests to cast a Questing Beast. It has double haste. It, it does. Actually, that removes haste. Math. Math. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You will pass the turn. All right. I'll pass the turn. I will untap. Toffle isn't playing very optimally. No. Huh? <laughs> I will flip from a mana crypt. I'll take three damage. I will draw. I will play a Thassa's Bounty. It says draw three cards. Target player puts the top three cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. Target. Me. Okay. One. Two, three. I will put a Painter's Servant into my graveyard. It's a creature scarecrow. It's a one three. As Painter's Servant comes into play, choose a color. All cards that aren't in play, spells and permanents are the chosen color in addition to its other colors. That won't come into play. That won't be relevant. I will also mill a Mycosin <laughs> Lattice, which is an artifact that all permanents are artifacts in addition to their other types. All cards that aren't in play, spells and permanents are colorless. Players may spend mana as though it were any mana of any color. And an insight. Whenever one of your opponents plays a green spell, you draw a card. I will play Mitra's Ball. In response, I will sacrifice Sword of the two Crack Clown Ironers to float two mana. As Mitra's Bobble is on the stack, Psy makes one Thopter. Just checking, just checking. Thopter will enter, triggers Sword of the Meek, it enters, equipped to that Thopter. I need to make the board cleaner, so I'm going to sacrifice Mitra's Bobble, Sword of the Meek, and this Thopter to Crack Clown Ironworks. So now you have eight mana. Eight floating mana. It's a lot of mana. I will then play Cascading Cataract which is an indestructible land. I can add a colors to my mana pool, or I can add five mana in any combination of colors to my mana pool if I pay five and tap it. I'll go down to three floating mana and cast Talent of the Telepath, targeting Yaman. Okay. Target opponent reveals the top seven cards of his or her library. You may cast an instant or sorcery card from among them without paying its mana cost. Then the player puts the rest into his graveyard. All right, so I reveal seven? Yes, please. Going by evidence so far, <laughs> there were seven mountains. Pretty bad targeting. Come oh, on. Wait, 
You have coins in your bag? Apparently. I would like to target Brilliant Restoration. Return all artifacts and enchantment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. I feel like I'm popping off right now. I was afraid of that kind of effect. I will ignore the rest. It's lucky that you have this card in your mono red mountain deck. <laughs> <laughs> Where do these cards go? In your graveyard. Mm. All right. Various. So what do we get? A sort of the meek. Uh huh. A Mishra's bottle. Uh huh. An insight. Whenever one or more of your opponents plays a green spell, you may draw a card. A Michael's lattice. A painter servant. And an underworld cookbook. I will order them as such. And with Painter Servant, I name Green. So which one entered the battlefield first? Insight. I see. Okay. I will pass a turn to Yami. Good luck. All right. Mm -hmm. I'll draw. I assume I'll draw? Yeah, you will. Good. Right. Good. Well guessed. You will play a mountain. Ah, um, it's a green spell. I will draw a card thanks to Judge. Insight. First, a high five. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nans are not spells. Toph, you get a point. Woohoo! That is correct. So it's 3 3 now. Yeah, man. Yep. You would like to cast Reanimate, targeting the Colossal Dreadmaw. All right, I'll target the Colossal Dreadmaw. Uh, I put target creature from any graveyard into play under my control. Uh, I lose life equal to that creature's total casting cost. Would you like to reread Colossal Dreadmine in case someone forgot? It's a 6 mana 6-6 six, six trample dinosaur. Since this is a green spell, I will draw a card. Judge. <laughs> yes. It's not a green spell, it's a colorless. And you are correct, because this is a tricky one. Now, different... Layers are like... Continue... <laughs> layers are like ogres, which are <laughs> like onions. <laughs> different continuous effects, if they technically would all apply at the same time, certain effects are prioritized over other ones. The issue here is that both of these fall under the same layer. Because you would think that Painter Servant entering first would apply first, but no, I did organize a timestamp. I did put Microsoft Lattice last. So first this enters, nothing. There's no continuous effects. Then this enters, there's no continuous effects. Same here, same here. Then Painter Servant happens. Everything is green. But then Microsoft Lattice enters the battlefield and remakes everything a colorless. So this is different than actual stack, because on the stack, then the Painter would happen last because it, it was put there first. Exactly, but mm -hmm. now it's continuous effects. They usually use layers, but these are in the same layer. <laughs> so it's just the timestamp. So it's like when you have a cake with strawberry and onions, it matters. Uh, Toph, no one has a cake with strawberry <laughs> and onions. You should try it. It's Can I make good. a little uh, note here for a point for me? Yes, nice. you get a point. And apparently a colossal dragon. You also lose six life. This resolves yes. now. Right, you're 12. I forgot. So I go down to six. Also grand choice, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, this gets put into my graveyard. Yamin, you will pass a turn. I'd like to attack. Yeah, you choose not to. Coward. Go ahead. Thought you will draw. Now, you really need to make a point. Potentially two. If not, Yamin is currently winning this. Even though on the board it doesn't look like that. At one point I will just call judge, even if nothing happens. <laughs> you will draw. Okay. I drew a forest. I know, you will play it. Oh. You will cast Whispering Cloak from your graveyard. I will. Yes. You will equip it. Judge. Never mind. No, I didn't say judge. No. Ah! No. No, 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 no. Yes. No. Wait. Red. No, blue. Ah! <laughs> it's very pleasant to be here, Mr. Judge. Ah, that was a statement. Oh, nice day to you too. Okay, goodbye. Whew. That was close. You will equip. You're Wait, that, that worked? <laughs> yeah, it was a delightful interaction. This is what I have to deal with all day. People have to be nice to judges as well. <laughs> Would you like to equip your whispering cloak <laughs> to your Muldrosa the Grave Tide? I will pay to and equip my cloak to my Muldrotha. You're upset about this interaction, so you'll attack Yamin. Oh, I'm very upset. Arrgh. I'll take Yamin. I've oh, never seen you so mad. What's yeah, going on? I, it's, it's all this judge thing. It's just really good. <laughs> Can I take? Yes. I will take. Got it. Todd, what does Whispering Cloak do? This creature has Shroud and is unblockable. Oh, shroud means yeah. it cannot be targeted by anything, anywhere, anytime. And unblockable means it cannot be blocked by anything, anywhere, anytime. Even no colossal dreadmalls. Which <sighs> seems That's unfair, rough. but... That's okay. Cast Teferi's Protection. I'll cast Teferi's Protection. Judge. 
<laughs> yes, Sorry. it's a future judge. I just wanted to be first. <laughs> what? <laughs> now we're calling judges from the future. It's it's like you know how in stock trading you make a contract for the future. <laughs> this is a judge call for in one minute. Go Yamin ahead. will survive. Mm, judge. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Hilar how how do we move from casting a spell? We haven't even resolved the spell. Can I call a judge because it's not exiled yet? <laughs> <laughs> okay. We've just cast a Okay, spell. we skipped some state. Okay, okay. <laughs> Would you like to read the fairy's protection? Until your next turn, your life total cannot change, and you gain protection from everything. All permanents you control phase out. While they're phased out, they're treated as though they don't exist. They phase in before your next untap during your untap step. Exile to fairy's protection. You know what? I'll generous will still figure out what happens and just take my judge call back, okay? Just as a fair gesture of pure honesty and friendship. Total. God. <laughs> Yamin will survive. <laughs> he might survive. I, I'm he not might. sure anymore either. <laughs> okay, just tell us what happens. Okay, Yamin so survives. In, in what way do I survive? Well, where is permanence? <laughs> Look at him, he's fine. That is true. Yeah, he's doing great <laughs> actually. He's so his Colossal Deadmire is confused apparently. Well, it's phased, it's phased out. out. Ah, those are all phased out now. Yeah. Okay, and you survived. Is everyone happy with this interaction? I'll say judge. Okay, what is the issue here, young man? This damage can't be prevented in any way. Why not? Because of the questing beast. Would you like to read a part of questing beast? Vigilance, death touch. <laughs> <laughs> Combat damage that would be dealt by creatures you control cannot be prevented. But I don't know how it interacts with my life total cannot change because I'm not sure if that prevents damage. But I think the damage still happens, but then my life total doesn't change. But then you would gain commander damage. I think I might gain commander damage. Oh, you're puzzling through this together. No, 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 no. I called judge before. <laughs> you remember? <laughs> no, you gave it back. <laughs> Nah, you don't take six commander damage. Uh, so I take six commander damage, but my life total doesn't change. Your life total does not change. Yeah, but you don't take like you, I mean, you do now take... I called the I called the judge, so I have to commit to <laughs> taking six <laughs> commander damage now. Oh no! Do I take six commander? You damage? do take six commander damage. Oh, now he you dies. do lose the game. Oh, Wait, I got a point. I didn't lose the game. You win the game at the same time. <laughs> so, what we forgot to see is this doesn't say. You can't lose the game. And he does take six damage, and his life total does not change, but it does, still does add to the commander damage total, which is now enough to make him lose the game. Mm. I'm sorry, Yamin. You're dead. Lose. This is still exiled, though. This is still exiled. Losing the game makes him lose three points, right? No, no. <laughs> uh, also, this Colossal Dreadmire is exiled. All fine by me. Judge! I need to get some points. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dalal. I say it's in my graveyard. It is not. You lose a point. You give a point to Yamin. Oh, you give a point? Oh, yeah. yeah, I guess. True. Judge! <laughs> I say this is the wrong ruling. <laughs> now I'm just going to go <laughs> Now wrong. you're just like spamming points <laughs> for Yamin. I can see it. I want to get. I want a commander game <laughs> on this <laughs> channel! <laughs> Thank you. So this is the perfect ending because you won the commander game and you won the game game. Perfect. Everyone's happy. Except for me, I conceded. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Uh, is there any extra rules violations that would be really cool to see in a future Actually, video? there's a main rules violation going on with about like 30% of our viewers or something right now. You're watching this video, but you're not subscribed. If you're not subscribed Judge. yet, then please go down there and click the subscribe button because that will make sure that you stay informed about the content we put out. Yes, and it helps us grow the channel. In the meantime, if you like this and you want to watch another video, there's two more videos coming up in three, two, one.